Hello everyone and welcome to another art session with me, Mr. Richardson. This activity is for my grade one students and we're going to be briefly learning about the Japanese artist Yayoi Kusama. Now, Yayoi Kusama was born in Japan in 1929 and developed as an artist and eventually in the mid 1900s she moved across the other side of the world to New York where she went to practice more of her artistic skills. Now, she didn't just focus on one particular style of artwork, so it wasn't just drawing or it wasn't just painting. She tried everything. She did large scale paintings, she um, did sculptures, and she also developed immersive exhibitions, which basically means that us as an art viewer can stand amongst the art and be within the actual art piece. Now, there was one thing that she was really obsessed about, which was polka dots. She loved polka dots and she saw the polka dot as part of the out of space, part of the cosmos, is that our planet, planet Earth, all the planets around, all the stars that surround in space are dots. So the big huge picture was all about the dots, but then she also said that it's the smaller picture too the microscopic small cells that make up everything is also made up of dots too, which I found very fascinating to find out that that's the way that she sees polka dots and the way that she uses them. So the word obsessive, she loved to use polka dots over and over and over again. She repeated them and covered things in polka dots with big ginormous paintings, bigger than the one that's behind me here on the wall, and sculptures as well. So. What she would do is just find it relaxing to be able to just create this artwork with the dots all neatly laid out in lines and patterns. So that is what we are going to be basing our artwork on today, is that we are going to be creating a dotty artwork, which is a pumpkin. She actually created sculptures of pumpkins and covered them all in lines of polka dots, because a polka dot can't really just be one dot. It needs to be surrounded by many, many dots. And that's why she was often referred to as the princess of polka dots. So we are going to be getting our polka dot on and what you will need for that is a piece of paper. If you've got colored paper, great. If not, plain paper is perfectly okay. You will need a gray lead pencil and a black texture. If you have got a black pen or a black fine liner, then that's great, you can use that too. And an eraser, of course, if you need to rub out any mistakes. So grab all of your stuff and let's get started. So Yoyoi Kusama was herself really brightly dressed and even wore a bright red wig. And she reflected that in her artworks as well because she loved bright colors. So pops of red and yellow, so we're going to be using yellow today. You can choose any other color or you can color in your pumpkin at the end with some colored pencils if you don't have colored paper. You want to try and fill up as much of the space as possible. So you don't want to do a teeny tiny little pumpkin in the center of your page. So with your gray pencil, you're gonna lightly sketch first. Remembering sketching is holding the pencil loosely, relax, and we're gonna draw light, short lines, so we're not gonna press hard and try and do it perfectly at the first time we do this. So at the top, I'm going to about third the way down, so one, two, three. I am going to go one, two, three, four. Kind of looks like two seagulls flying side by side. And I am going to draw the stem at the top. And then this outside part, the outside part of the seagull's wing is going to go around and down and then curl around like that. And then on the other side, we're gonna do the same. So around, down and flick up. And just like the top, we're going to finish this off. So from the top here, we're going to curl around and 
curl it around like that. Same on this side, on the top, curl it around. And for the cup, I'm going to join these together. And there is my fat pumpkin. So after I've drawn my pumpkin, I'm going to draw even more lighter than I did before. I can barely see the line. So in the middle of each section of the pumpkin, I'm gonna put a very, 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 very gentle line. You probably can't see it, but I can. I don't want to see too much of it. I just want to barely see it. And that's going to help me put my dots on my pumpkin. So I curled it around. And then I'm in the middle of those sections, I'm gonna put another one. And in the middle of that section, I'm gonna put another one. So each section should have three almost invisible lines. So another one there, another one there. Last couple. All right, so every section's got Three, six, nine, twelve. All right. In the middle, gentle invisible line there, I'm going to do my bigger dots. So, take your time. This can be quite relaxing and therapeutic by trying to get all of your dots as close to perfect as possible. So start around the outside and then you just sort of go in, 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 in until you close the dot up. So I've done the middle line of that section there. So then do the same on one, two, three. Okay, so I finished all of my rows of big black dots there. Now, as an artist, I am sure that you realize that we all make mistakes at some stage. And I have realized that after I did my first line there, I put my hand in the wet black texture dots there and I now have a Yoyoi Kusama inspired hand. So probably best not to put your hand on top of the black dots there. I turned, after I realized, I turned the paper around and worked on the outside and then kept going with the other side once that side was dry. But never mind, I've got a few black smudges there, but they, t happy little accident, it's lined up on the other gray lead line there where I'm gonna put other dots. So never mind, I can always fix up these smudges too. I can uh, get my texture and just draw them to turn them back into a nice crisp dot again. But never mind. Is what it is. Okay, so I've now got my other invisible lines either side of my big dots there. So I'm gonna continue and put my medium sized dots on those lines right beside the big ones. So again, you're going to continue the process with Dots that are slightly smaller than the ones you just did. And they're gonna be closer together, following that nearly invisible line all the way down until you get to the bottom. And then, as I've learned, I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna work from this side until that side dries out with my texture. And then you're going to repeat the process for every other invisible line that you have drawn on your pumpkin. So I'm sure that is quite a few dots that you have got to draw. It'll keep you occupied for a little while. So I'll see you when you have finished doing all of these medium sized dots. Okay, I've done all my medium sized dots. I've still got a fair bit of space 
either side. So depending on how much space you've got either side of each section, I can then do small dots. So I've done my big ones, my medium ones, my small ones. So that's just pressing my texture over and over. Carefully in lines. Find the last slot. Try not to get let the gaps get too big. So then continue with your small dot. Okay, I've done lots of little dots. I had enough room that I could do two rows of little dots next to my medium ones, which is next to the big dots. Now, depending on how patient you are and how much time you have got, you can do this next step if you want to, you don't have to. I like to see a contrast and difference with my different sized dots, although looking at all these dots now, it's kind of making my eyesight. See spots everywhere, so you might need to look away and have a bit of a break from all of the dots. But I have got my little black fine liner pen, or you can use just like a normal writing pen. If you've got one, if you don't have one, no sweat, you don't have to do this bit. But I am then going to squish in some teeny tiny little dots right next to my little ones. They are so, so small. So again, up to you if you want to do this bit, otherwise, I will see you in the next step. All right, so I've finished all of my dots. I've done my big dots, my medium dots, my little dots, and I have gone for teeny tiny dots too, but they are optional. So my next step is I'm going to get my black marker and I'm going to carefully outline on the gray lead lines that I drew at the start. So take your time because you kind of have to go in between all of those dots. And you might run over a few of them. Never mind. Okay, and then the last thing I've got is my stem. Now the stem is kind of the reverse. So instead of it being black dots, I want it to be yellow dots. I'm like, hmm, how am I going to do that? So I'm going to do some open dots. I'm gonna kind of do half ones on the stem and like it looks like it kind of bends around the edge of the stem, like it's going around the side. One popping out there and another one there. And I can even put a few little ones in between. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully color with my black texture around them. So I leave those open circles uncolored. So here is my finished Yayoi Kusama inspired dotty pumpkin. So I hope you learned a little bit about the artist Yayoi Kusama and her love of polka dots. Remember this is an activity that's going to take you a little bit of time to get all of the dots neatly lined up. Remember there's also an option there if you want to just challenge yourself a little bit further, completely up to you. I've stuck mine on a piece of different coloured paper just to make it stand out. You don't have to do that, but if you've got the paper handy, go for it. After drawing all of those polka dots though, my eyes are seeing spots. I think I've drawn so many dots now. I need a bit of a lie down. All I can see is spots. Bye.